Chair will call the January 3rd, 2019 meeting of the City Council order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yeah. Alderman Redpath. <laughs> Alderman Sinor. Here. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Pilginzi. Here. Alderman Proctor. Here. Alderman Vicenzo. Present. Alderman McMenamin. Here. Alderman Tylen. Here. Alderman Donnelly. Here. Alderman Hanau. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. We have uh, two presentations tonight. The first one is uh, an update on the YMCA project. So if uh, Joe Hurwitz and Paul Wheeler would like to come forward, please. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I'm Joe Hurwitz, and Paul Wheeler of FWI Architects is with us to give a little bit of a overview of where we're at relative to elevation, site plans, etc. So, just to give you a real quick update, because uh, I know times of the essence. Basically, where we're at on this transaction is the YMCA is in the process of working through their seven million dollar um, fundraising campaign, and they're approximately four point eight million right now which is well on the way. They're just now going to go with the public uh, portion, and so we're very optimistic that we'll reach the goal. Uh, secondly, we are, have engaged Delton Phelps. They are the new market tax credit uh, consultants out of St. Louis. We're working diligently on that. We hope to have that wrapped up. Everything looks positive. It is not done yet, but we feel that by probably May, we'll have that put together. Um, we are very close to finalizing a $22 million uh, fundraising, or I'm sorry, uh, letter of commitment from United Community Bank and all of the consortium of various city banks. That's all going very well. We've negotiated the, uh, the term sheet and probably I would guess within about 60 days we'll have that finalized. Um, we've engaged obviously FWAI. They are well on their way uh, through quite frankly Memorial's generosity of funding the architectural on the front end. Uh, before the whole transactions together and Paul is well on his way as you'll see with generating the drawings we anticipate having uh, schematics in biddable form probably by the end of this month and so that's going very well with full construction documents etc probably completed at the first part of May and that way we can go to bid permitting etc um, Phil Martin of Martin Engineering is presently working through the civil plans uh, so that's well in the way. We should have those wrapped up within about 30 days. Utility relocations are complete in the alley. Uh, we currently, you will see this very soon, we have reached an agreement with the property owners on the north side of Union, and we have asked uh, Public Works to confirm that they would allow us to vacate Union Street. That's well in its way. Uh, the Union Street plat is already back in for Bob Lowe's review and we would anticipate that coming before you in the not too distant future. A lot of that depends on how long it takes public works to review, but all that's put together. Um, we have finalized the gift, the land gift agreement with uh, DNR for hopefully providing the old Y when demoed, which is our obligation to demolish. Uh, that will be uh, given to IDNR for hopefully the Dana Thomas House, but that is finalized. Uh, we've hired Mike Southwards uh, to be our bond counsel, and we will be coming before either the city and the county or a combination thereof for bonding, for tax-exempt bond financing, which is part of our $22 million commitment. Uh, we have purchased three properties on 5th Street, which Paul will show in his site plan, uh, and those are closed, but we are in for zoning. We go on the 16th of this month to PNZ, and we will be asking for your approval in February for uh, parking, off-premise parking, because we had to acquire additional uh, property to park. There's four properties on 5th Street, just south of the Cath Lab, down to Union. Those are purchased and we're in for zoning. Uh, we'll be asking for S3 on, on that particular parcel. So you'll be seeing that in the near term. Um, quite frankly, there's a lot of hoops to still jump through, but we are well on the way, we're on schedule, and I would anticipate a groundbreaking uh, on or about June 15th. So with that overview, I'm going to ask Paul to take over 
and then we can open the forum up for questions, if any. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, it's a very good time to be presenting this. We're at a very good place in the design. What you see up on the screens is the site plan. Uh, the bottom street, the, the dark gray, that's Carpenter Street, and the dark gray street on the le on the right hand side is Fourth Street. So that should orientate you. Um, right out of the box, the big decision was um, the location of the building with relationship to these streets. <coughs> Option was to put the parking on the corner of Fourth and Carpenter uh, and the building back or vice versa. We, we chose to put the building right on the corner of 4th and Carpenter, um, which creates a much far better uh, urban impact and uh, gets the entrance to the building back where the, the majority of the parking is going to be. Um, so the parking lot is to the north, to the top. Um, over to the east side is the, the satellite parking lot uh, off of 5th uh, and Union that Joe was, was just talking about. And uh, that is Union Street towards the top that then will be, uh, um, become part of our parking lot um, so that we get a, a fair amount of parking behind the building. Can I ask you a question? I thought I'd seen some plans earlier that had the parking right across the street. Did, wasn't there a lot that we were going to buy across the street or get donated or something? Uh, Paul, if you don't mind let me take yeah, that. Yeah. If you show Paul, you a ladder, <coughs> the, the parking, Chuck, what you're referring to, our original drawing, um, which when we first generated plans, which I think you all saw when we were here for the TIF, depicted a parking lot immediately east of our parking lot north of the Y, of the main parking lot. That, that parking was actually, is actually, that land is actually owned by St. John's. And we actually went to St. John's in a multitude of ways. We asked them to participate with us as, as a joint group of the lead, lend, of the lead philanthropic end. Memorial's committed $10 million to this project. We actually asked Saints to participate with us on that and be, have both a cash contribution and the land. They turned us down in very early on. Subsequently, we went to St. John's and asked to, if they would consider donating that property. And we asked them that if they would donate it, we would give them naming rights as to the retail value of that real estate. Uh, lastly, when they said no to that, lastly we went and said, would you just sell us the ground? And they would not sell us the ground. Do they have something planned? That, because it seems like it would divide off our parking lot. Uh, it clearly divides our parking lot, Chuck. And quite frankly, we were a little taken back that that didn't work out better. But for whatever reason, they have declined to participate in the project at every level that we ask. It's too bad. I think they have uh, plans for expansion. I think that's what they... Well, that's what I'm saying there. Right. Be, uh, I mean, it, it would have been easier if we don't have the parking lots all together and they could have went around the corner or something. You know. that, that was our goal, but unfortunately that hadn't happened, and that's exactly why we're going to be back here uh, in on the 16th for P and Z, and then subsequently back to you for the rezoning of the satellite parking. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right, next slide, please. This is the ground level of the Y. To the right, you can see the entrance sort of in the middle of the building. We divided the building up so that there was a, a clear organization to it. We see this as a, as a very heavily used community building as well, not just for Y members. So. Right in the main lobby is access to the multi-purpose room, which is just to the bottom there and kind of the tan colored box. So uh, uh, other community people can come in and use and use the community Excuse room me. for different sorts of, of uses and not have to track through the whole building, not have to can go. You use, can you use a pointer, please? To, well, I'm not. Oh, it doesn't work. Will this one work on the on the screen? It won't work. It doesn't show on the TV screen. My apologies. Um, also, then up uh, above the entrance there is, in, on the far right, light blue, that is the youth center. So that's day camp. Kids will use that space specifically after school. So again, immediately as they come in the building, they go into that section of the building and they're not moving throughout. Following that is the main gymnasium. Again, that gets heavy use, uh, allows public to come in, use the gym without tracing through the building. Uh, then you run into the locker rooms. Uh, to the um, upper left is the an eight-lane swim pool, which faces Carpenter Street. 
And below that, the orange box is a new gymnastics center. So uh, that's one of the expanded programs that the wire is going to offer a more competitive sort of uh, uh, facility for, for the kids. So kind of the neat thing on the first floor here, we've got public, uh, I mean community sort of public and kids. Then if we could go to the next slide. Uh, the upper level is uh, primarily adult uh, wellness area. That's where all of the treadmills and all the weight areas are. Um, uh, the, uh, we've got a running track that goes around the gymnasium. That's the upper right there. Uh, and we also have aerobic rooms and cycling rooms. So the upstairs is primarily uh, going to be used for fitness. So we've got the kids separated from the adults primarily. Um, so the next slide is the imagery of the building. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, we've got, if we get, have the next slide. Yeah, uh, this still needs quite a bit of sandpaper, but it's, it's getting there. It's, it's, a, it's a big building. This is the view of the corner of 4th and Carpenter. Um, so the primary structure of the building is precast, which helps us with our, our large spans of swimming pools and gymnasiums and that sort of thing. Um, it also becomes our structure, and it, it's very, very durable material. We're playing with the precast to get a variety of textures and windows and that sort of thing on it to give it a real, uh, a real diverse appearance. And then down at the level where the pedestrians are primarily going to be, we're switching to masonry. Up above is the primary workout areas, and that's, that's that fitness area. So at night, this building should really glow. Uh, below all that glass area is that gymnastics area that we talked about. Uh, we got to be careful with the amount of glass there, but you can see we've got some playfulness with some windows going on and such. So um, uh, finally, we added that eyebrow sort of on the top of the building that cantilevers out. Uh, that will help shield the sun, uh, the south sun, but it also, uh, if you're familiar with the Carasotas uh, facility, it, it, it uh, relates to, their, the, that's a main feature on the Carasota's building, and it, so it starts tying the two YMCA's together from an aesthetic point of view. So that's kind of the big picture of where we are in design, and um, we'll keep working away. Any questions? Alderman Dowling. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for the update. I really appreciate knowing where you are and what the plans are and some of the changes. Uh, this is just a minor request. If you could my 40 plus year old eyes can't, and I appreciate the rendering, uh, can't read what rooms are what. I know you described it, but if you could uh, maybe reprint them on like 11 by 17 and get them to us, that would be very helpful. You bet. Yeah, thank you. Good work. Any, any other questions or comments? Lastly, I would like to thank the mayor and the council for your support in this project. I can tell you that it's transformational, I think, for downtown. We think it's transforma transformational for Enos Park. We've had tremendous support from the Enos Park Neighborhood Association, even when they don't like necessarily satellite parking. Uh, we've had a couple board meetings on that, but they're fully supportive of that. And I can tell you that uh, Memorial uh, is thrilled with all your help, and we appreciate it, and we're looking forward very much to having this deal become a reality. A lot of work yet to do. But uh, we're well on the way to making it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is uh, Mark Mahoney, Director Mahoney, give a overview of uh, public works projects. Ready? Go. All right. Thank you. Um, the mayor asked us to give it really a general progress update 
And with the completion of the ward meetings and as we head into the budget uh, time of year, it's probably a good time to have a little discussion about, uh, and as we plan for 2019, we've started the aldermanic meetings on the infrastructure, roads, sidewalks, that kind of stuff. So uh, first of all, I just want to thank, I mean, it really comes down to revenue. That's what much of what Public Works does, as you know, it's the funding source. And over the last um, several years, the council and the mayor have been very supportive of that. And, and not just this council and, and this mayor, but if you go all the way back to, I remember the early 2000s when some of the people around here still then in different capacities with the Alderman Donlin, but there was a time in the early 2000s where there was very little money for infrastructure. And the, the late Mayor Davlin and that council at that time uh, took some steps in sales tax increases, and then that was expanded with under Mayor Houston and that council, and then continued under this council. A variety of support, uh, primarily sales tax into Fund 95, but also hotel motel funding as well as the gaming funds have been put into that Fund 95. Without Fund 95 and without the protection of Fund 95, and I know many of you have spoken out um, strongly about protecting that fund, there wouldn't be an infrastructure program. That is the primary funding source of our infrastructure, other than obtaining some grants, some state and federal money, which we've been very lucky in certain projects to get. But for maintaining what you see mostly outside of your house, the residential streets, the sewers, the um, your sidewalks, those kind of things, that comes down to a maintenance program. So we, we thank you for that support, and I, we try to do the best we can to manage. And what we've been able to do is really follow best practices over the last several years. We have a very professional engineering staff, um, Nate Bottom, uh, David Whitworth with us here today, John Higginbotham in our sewer division, among many others, who've been able to approach us a little differently over the last several years from just crisis management. We've approached it from really a best practices professional approach. And that's not to say there's not challenges. There's still funding challenges, as all of you know, on a lot, in a lot of areas where we could use additional funding and desperately need additional funding. But on the maintenance side, which is a big part of our infrastructure program, we've been very fortunate and a lot better than a lot of other cities. So I'll just jump into it, and I talk fast, which is probably a good thing in this regard to get us through it, but, uh, and answer any questions as we go along or if we want to at the end. But the, the first one really just shows you what you already know. Um, what's the infrastructure of the city of Springfield? What are we responsible for in public works? It's pretty straightforward. On the street side, one of the additions has been uh, that the mayor has uh, asked us to oversee the lake roads. We work very closely with lake services and with the utility and take a really a best practices approach with those roads as well. And over the last year or two, we put them into our program and treat them just like any other road throughout the city of Springfield. Then we have our sewers. Our sewers throughout the city of Springfield, many of you know the combined sewer, the sanitary sewer, and as well as the storm sewers we're responsible for, the sidewalks, the curb ramps, traffic signals. We have about 290 signalized intersections in the city of Springfield. <coughs> about 100 and I think it's about 40 or 50 of those are city, purely city responsibility, additional or joint responsibility that we oversee throughout the city, within the city limits, with the state and with some other uh, areas where we, we, we work with them. Bridges, 21 structures, and then the other piece of it that's always out there is the modernization, the improvement, those additional projects like railroad relocation that we'll touch a little bit on here too. And as I said, our Office of Public Works Engineering and Sewer Division are really in responsible for that professional approach at inspection, monitoring, planning, and the repair of that infrastructure that is in the city of Springfield. It's their responsibility, and again, I, I'll, I'll give a shout out to all of them. I think they do a very good job. Um, they manage well, they approach it with best practices, and they're always eager and innovative with their approach. So we're, we're lucky to have those folks that working for the city of Springfield, and I, especially my position, appreciate them, what they do. Wanted to show really road improvements this time period. And what this reflects is that period where there was a increase in the sales tax uh, and then that ramp up, that three year period where we spent about $86 million on infrastructure. Uh, we did some borrowing and we were able to ramp up and really dig us out of a hole. There was many areas of the city, a lot of residential roads that hadn't been repaired in, I will say decades, it had been 15, 20 plus years. There were brick streets that hadn't been touched in, in a long time. In most cases, many people don't remember the last time we did a complete overhaul of some of those brick streets. We've been able to do that, as you can see, over the last several years based on having those, fun, those revenues. You can see the amount of work that's been done about our asphalt streets, which is primarily is most of our streets, over half, is about almost $90 million worth of work, 195 miles. Seal Co. program, 180 miles, over $5 million, five and a half. Concrete patching, as well as the brick streets I mentioned, eight of our approximately 13 miles of brick streets we've been able to make improvements on and continue with that. That's allowed us, the maintenance program I talked about, really what we do is we take a professional approach, our engineering staff following best practices, they rate the roads, and we basically, what we do is make decisions based off of those ratings. Those professional judgments are made. Uh, we communicate 
with the alderman, with the mayor, of course, and making those decisions. But what we've been able to do, and we appreciate your support on that as well, is to make professional decisions what's best for the city as a whole, and obviously, you know, for your wards as well. The, uh, what we've also been able to do is be a little more proactive in our approach. Uh, recently, we had the contract that came through this summer. That's a part of that, that preventative maintenance, that crack filling, those approaches where we try to spend money early on, a little bit of money, you spend a dollar today, could end up saving 5 to $10 if we put that off several years and the road conditions deteriorated to the point where there's going to be uh, significant work that had to be done. Sewers. That is primarily over a 10-year period starting back, it's basically started in 2013 and it runs through 2022, a rate increase of approximately about 50 cents for the average customer. And what that's allowed us to do is maintain our capital improvement program, our repairs to the combined and the separate sanitary sewer system. And we followed our capital improvement plan. You can see it laid out here what we've been able to do and what we have underway. There's engineering on, underway on some of these projects. Some will be coming online um, this coming season as well as we, we also obtain, try to obtain other funds, might subsidence, depending monies out there through DNR and some of these situations, but primarily it's funded through the sewer fund. So by that small increase over that period of time, we've been able to access low interest uh, EPA loans, Clean Water Act loans, and do a lot of these projects and it can keep us on course to really maintain the infrastructure we have. And also uh, the sewer division probably is one of our most innovative as far as their approach with the, the pipe rating system, doing a lot of the calculations, the professional approach. Uh, they've really tapped into using our software program and all of our asset management is CityWorks and we put everything in there. The sewer division probably has been on the forefront of that utilizing the City Works program and take, making those professional decisions. And, and frankly, what we are in, I would say, I would put our sewer division up against any uh, in some of the approaches they've taken and in the ratings that they have. And it's probably more along a best practice even than the sanitary district. I know some don't like to hear that, but I would, I would argue that, and I, our folks would as well. Sidewalks, uh, curb ramps, I know you get a lot of calls about sidewalks. and. Um, as we try to do the best to follow the bicycle pedestrian plan, and that is established by the Regional Planning Commission, and that creates connectivity along those areas where there's a lot of people walking around the schools, try to make sure we're monitoring that, making those improvements, as well as addressing it, we get a lot of complaints, and a lot of times in certain areas where you have a lot of pedestrian activity. So we try to focus our resources on those, as well as <coughs> utilizing our own public works crews, our CMF finishers and our crews that, that work in, in that area. And that's one of the areas that um, the mayor has talked about some new initiative possibilities of putting those out there, not, not in our current budget, but something someday to look forward to, is if we were able to augment that CMEC crew, we could probably do quite a bit more in repairing the curbs throughout the city, a lot of the ADA ramps are out there doing that in-house. So if we have a sidewalk here or a repair here or there, it's more cost effective for our guys to do it. When we have larger areas in the sidewalk program, that's when we contract it out, which is most of the sidewalk work we do. And you can see down here how many, I mean, we showed we have 60 million square feet of sidewalk throughout the city of Springfield. When we, when we've been able to address about almost 2 million, and the curb ramps especially, when we go in and we do an overlay, any street repair, what we do is we repair the, the curb ramps and those intersections and the curbs in those areas when we, do, when we make those uh, road improvements. Traffic signals. Uh, traffic signal modernization over the last several years, you can see we've been uh, fortunate with the work the state did on Wabash to make some upgrades on that corridor, as well, well as on Taylor and Stanford. We've done some uh, maintenance as we needed to the control or the controller replacements, as well as some of the detection cameras throughout the city. But really, one of the things we, we, we talked to the council back, I think, a year or two ago, is our traffic signal modernization needs. And we estimate right now we really have a $20 million need that's out there. Uh, it's not funded other than taking those funds out of Fund 95, which we try to do and manage as best we can. But there is a significant need for more funds for our traffic signal modernization. Right now, uh, working with through City Works and collecting some of that data, uh, engineering has been working very closely with the utility and trying to make an assessment throughout the city and those upgrades that can be done and trying to develop that plan a little bit further. And we'll be coming to probably discuss that more with the council in the, in the near future. Um, phase one, we've approached and the engineering is underway and that's sort of our older signals in some of the downtown area. And that's kind of, it kind of got uh, lost in the discussion on the one way, two way discussion, but it's really a traffic signal modernization plan for the downtown core. And that's really the engineering's underway on that. We'll be bringing that to the council probably in the near future as well as we move towards, um, eventually towards construction. Bridges, uh, we employ the county to work with us. They do the inspections on our behalf every other year. 
Um, there are funds, state and federal funds, that we access for those bridge repairs. And you can see the majority of the funding, uh, the city has a, a piece that we contribute, but we've been able to the, get periodically get enough funds to make those repairs as needed. As you can see, obviously, Chatter Road was a major one phase that was completed. We have A Street and Drawbridge that are underway in the engineering phase, and we'll be moving forward on those as, as we move forward. Major infrastructure improvements that sort of fall outside of what would be considered really the routine maintenance. As many of you are aware, a lot of it has to do with railroad relocation. You've seen the work on Carpenter Street with the underpass that was completed. Uh, Stanford, as well the 11th Street extension that we just opened this summer. Archer Elevator, the roundabout. You've seen Jackson Street improvements and the downtown streetscape, as well as the Hilton Ramp. And then, of course, we partnered with IDOT on the Wabash Corridor, as well as Dirksen Parkway improvements that were done. Planned or underway, major projects that are out there is right now is Archer Elevator to continue wall bash to Greenbrier. We're planning on that this construction season. Ash and Laurel, many of you know that obviously with the railroad that is underway as we speak. Um, and the, it's hopefully cur currently it's on schedule. Um, the uh, 5th and 6th Street underpass, uh, we obtained a, a Beld Grant Award just uh, recently, and that's a huge step as we move forward in the railroad relocation. And I got a slide here I'll show you in a second to really show you how far we've come on funding for railroad relocation. And then, of course, Hilltop Road, making some of the multi-trail use uh, access, the issues that we have out there. We're working through that and hope to begin construction and hopefully complete it in 2019. And then, of course, uh, Stanford, the next phase, uh, the completion of that expansion as well. And then, of course, some of the IDOT projects, and we're hopeful with a capital bill, some of these will start to move forward a little more rapidly. Um, of course, MacArthur Boulevard, uh, the, the issues that we have with it, some of the expansion there, Stevenson Drive, Dirksen, and 6th Street are all on the, um, on the plan in the five-year plan, and we hope they'll be moving up with a capital bill. This slide here is where I was talking about the railroad, and really this is where we are right now, and we are optimistic that hopefully we'll be able, with a capital bill, to maybe obtain even further funding support, and, and we can't thank enough what IDOT has done for us so far, but and also with the federal support we've got from our congressional delegation as, as well as uh, at the U.S. Department of Transportation providing us these, this funding. And what we've seen is our target of 2025 of relocating the tracks to 10th Street is very realistic. And you can see how much we're over half funded now, and there's a great opportunity here to take that even further. So we're in a pretty good position to be where we want to be in 2025, and it's something the mayor and the, really working as a coalition with our delegation as well as the county have been pushing very hard, and it's going to be a huge, huge uh, improvement for the city as well as provide opportunities on that third street corridor something we'll probably at some point be talking about as an infrastructure opportunity and as a, an, an economic opportunity at some point as well future infrastructure challenges uh, they're always there but the infrastructure is i mean the road modernization many of you know we have many roads throughout the city that need upgrades and we're trying to start to whittle away at that converting the seal coat roads oil and ship roads to asphalt where we can we have a lot of areas that that need obviously new storm sewer they need curbs gutters all that type of thing those are modernization pieces that we are you know, not adequately funded for right now we try to whittle away at it best we can but it's you know a drop in the bucket those are areas where it'd be a huge help if we were able to take some type of state or federal support as, as we move forward. Traffic signal modernization, it's in the same category um, in that conversion I meant, just mentioned. Stormwater, um, we have a funding source for our sewer, for our sanitary and combined, but when it comes to storm sewers, a lot of the flooding we see with the surface flooding, we saw some on Monday, it's really inadequate infrastructure in a lot of these areas that wasn't developed for the type of rain events that we're seeing these days. And what we need to do is we need to start engineering and planning for the future. And every community, a lot of communities, are, all communities are, are trying to address that. Some have been a little more proactive. Some of them have established uh, storm utilities, storm water utilities. I know Decatur, Peoria, some of those communities. And we've been trying to watch very closely what they're doing within public works. And it's going to be a discussion that's probably, you know, in the near future we'll be wanting to have with the, with the mayor and, of course, the, the council. But right now it's an area that's woefully underfunded. We try to address some of the drainage projects the best we can through Fund 95, but we're very limited in what we can contribute to that. And then, of course, you never know about the EPA mandates. As you know, we, we've had the issue in the northeast sewer area. We've been trying to make some improvements. We submitted a plan to the EPA. We actually just had some recent communication back and forth from them, but we're still waiting for really a final determination from them on some of what we're proposing to address some of the problems in that area. So that's really a drop in the bucket, and that's that, that's not funded either. And then we have estimates that could be a $40 million project. So that's out there as we speak. 
really in conclusion, our infrastructure maintenance planning improvements, they're never complete. I know a lot of times people think, okay, we'll, we'll have define a revenue source, we'll fix a problem, and there is no problem. With infrastructure, as soon as you repair it, it's, it's just the lifespan. I mean, at some point in time, you're gonna have to make repairs. And it's just part of what we, our responsibility of public works and as you as elected officials is to maintain that infrastructure and maintain that funding source for, to allow us to, to do our job and try to do it with the, you know, the most professional manner possible. And best practice management city infrastructure is critical. We're never gonna have enough money, it's just the way it is. It's, we've never had enough money and you have to manage it the best you can. And we have a, a very good staff that I think tries to do uh, the best they can to make that money go as far as they can for you and for the citizens of the city of Springfield. And then there's a lot of funding decisions I think are gonna are critical to our future. One of them is that stormwater utility that I mentioned, as well as some of this modernization, either something from the state or the federal or local aid, looking at some options out there to fund some of those needs that currently are not funded. I also included, and you'll, you'll have that in your handout, is here some of the references, our long-term planning. A lot of times there's um, a lot of thought that we do some of this in the vacuum, but we do plan. You said we have a long range transportation plan, we have a comprehensive plan, we have a lot of these resources out the bike and pedestrian plan that I mentioned that we try to follow. Those are something that we rely on, we work through. Um, there's a lot of these, I mean, there's give and take on some of them, but it keeps us uh, really online with what our improvements, what our needs are. I know we always talk about how long it talks it takes. I know the mayor always wants to talk about 11th Street, how long it took to do it. But a lot of those things are on the, plan, on the plans, it's just the funding's not there. And then of course, you know, that sometimes priorities change. There's changes in administrations or there's changes in, in, in development as well. That can change things as well. So that's where the comprehensive plan comes in. It's very helpful and some of that planning as well because it gives us sort of a guideline. So, and then questions, so. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mayor. Director, I don't really have a question. I just want to make a couple of statements. Uh, okay. I, have, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the technical aspect of your department and when it comes to evaluating road, roadways, in other words, giving it a fair analysis, uh, you know, and in, in helping with the prioritization of what roads, sidewalks, and curbs, and sewers that we address first. But I want to also thank you for, you and your department, for your due diligence and listening to the citizens. And we've had ward meetings throughout uh, at least the last four years uh, uh, with citizens on a regular basis, and uh, projects that have been brought up they may or may not have already been on the uh, on, on the uh, plan, uh, have been addressed, and uh, I, I receive calls and, and, and comments uh, when I'm out and about from residents uh, about the work that's been done. So I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. I understand you're in a quandary where the need is never ending, but we made some significant progress, and, and thank you and the mayor and the rest of the council for, for those efforts. Thank you. Yeah. Alderwoman DeCento. Um, I am going to echo Alderman Donlin's statements. Thank you very much. I know a lot has been um, made about uh, alleys, and, but it, it is truly appreciated around Ward 6, um, how much work has been done to the alleys. People can now drive down them, as well as brick road repair. Uh, we've had, I think we had two projects last year, and that's it makes a huge difference to those residents, so thank you very much. Alderman Tyler. Uh, I agree with uh, my colleagues, but I'd also like to point out that the work that you've been doing uh, over the last five, six years, like you said, going back to FY13, um, because the city started catching up, and like you said, we had a, a big hole that we had to overcome to even get to where we are. Uh, most of the complaints that I get are about things that aren't even the city's because the city has now caught up and gotten to the point where the county roads that are lobbed in the middle or the holes in the donut or things that don't belong to the city of Springfield like Chat good portion of Chatham Road, those are the, com the, the roads that I'm getting the most of the complaints on and I have to explain to my constituents that those aren't the city of Springfield but I'll pass it along. And I think that, that that is a big, huge accomplishment for public works where, at least for me, in the beginning, I had a lot of complaints about some major roads, Monroe, Chatham, Washington, and Lawrence. And now you're at the point where most of my complaints are things that I'm explaining aren't even the city of Springfield's problem. Alderman Senor. Uh, thank you. Uh, you took care of the problem that we had. I appreciate it. You did it expeditiously. Um, also, 
since you're up here, can you give us an update on what the Christmas tree pickup will be mm -hmm. for the yeah. next year? <laughs> Monday, uh, yeah, we did a press on it. It was it ran, but it's January um, 7th on Monday. So if you have your tree out by the 7th, we'll, we'll pick it up. And that'll be a free pickup, is that correct? That's free pickup. So our public work crews will run through and pick them up. All so. right, thank you. Make sure they're tinsel free and everything else. Tinsel free, right? no frocking, whatever that is, but don't frock. Flocking. Don't flock or frock. <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave, leave the flocking in the alley. What the flock? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Outstanding job, Director Mahoney. Speaking of infrastructure, last night I sent out a group email towards seven constituents. I wrote to 508 constituents. I didn't know you'd be, you know, making this presentation tonight. Of the 500, they had to do with infrastructure in the southwest area of Springfield predominantly. Of the 508 emails, and I just checked my count just now as you're making your presentation, 246 of those emails were open. That means constituents wanted to see what was inside the in email. You know, an a industry average is about 15% open rate when you send out a blast. Uh, this was a 49% open rate. So the point is that there's a great deal of interest in infrastructure, and many constituents are following what's going on at the city council. And so Alderman Tylen brought up Chatham Road. The most common and uh, of the 246 emails that were open, um, maybe 30 constituents took the time to actually write a comment. Chatham Road was the most common comment. And Public Works engineers did an outstanding job presenting a uh, crack filling program contract for the City Council. And our engineers advised the City Council, don't delay on this project. And we delayed on the, on the project approval by the City Council. And there's constituents out there that are, that are upset. And speaking of, uh, Chris, you mentioned that part of that road is not ours. But if you recall, the mayor and I co-sponsored an ordinance that provided for an intergovernmental agreement with Leland Grove for that one mile of Leland Grove. And we had that all worked out. But we couldn't get that work completed entirely on in the section owned by Linden Grove because of, again, the delay by this council on that contract. Now, I understand the council wanted to make sure that local employees got hired for that work. But we got to be practical and realistic. That contract represented about a 3% only total of all of our infrastructure work during the last summer, 3%. And the, con the winning contractor who unbid our locals by about 20%, he explained he had specialized equipment, he had teamwork that he wanted to take into consideration by his uh, teams that we were br he was bringing in, and he committed to a 50% local hiring, and he agreed that if he didn't meet that, he would exclude himself and we would kick him off any future contracts. So all of that was presented to the council and our council still delayed that contract, and we only got about 50% of the work done before the cold weather came. So, uh, Director Mahoney, you've done an outstanding job. Our engineers have advised our council, and it was <coughs> inexcusable for delays to be done, for delays to occur on Chatham Road, which goes through Ward 7, Ward 8, Ward 9, Ward 10. And I'll add this. Um, Alderman Hennar, we were at a Westchester Homeowners Association Mayor, meeting. Mayor, do we have to listen to a political speech while we're sitting here trying to do business? This is ridiculous. We have to hear this Every all time. the time. It's ridiculous. I think he's trying to uh, clarify he some of the He made his point three times ago. I mean, we've already heard about it. Well, I'll let him finish. You'd wrap it up. This is something that's important to constituents. Chuck, you can talk about your constituents. I sent out an email to 500 in, uh, constituents last night. I got and I that, didn't Joe. know that Mr. Mahoney would be here tonight. So in closing, um, at that Westchester Neighborhood Association, a gentleman came up afterwards and said, you know, I've got a family member that, rides, uh, that drives ambulance trucks, ambulances, and the word has gotten out, <coughs> avoid Chatham Road because of 
um, they're concerned about the patients inside the ambulance. So uh, I'm just explaining, uh, uh, Chuck, no, you've got, you've got roles that are important in your week. area too, and you, you speak about week. them, and you can tie up some time. You do it every so I'm week. spoken for six minutes, and we give our public members five minutes. So excuse me for taking an extra month. I got elected to the seat, and I'm going to talk luck. what constituents want to be said here at the council. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Tyler. Just a simple comment that, you know, you, you did make the uh, mayor, you made the effort to try to fix something that you knew that Springfield citizens were upset about, which was Chatham Road, including the section that didn't belong to the city. I applaud you for going out and getting that intergovernmental agreement, but that doesn't excuse years of the infrastructure not being maintained by someone who was responsible for it. So let's keep in mind that, you know, Springfield didn't go out there with our workers in a pickaxe and knock those potholes in there. We didn't let it build up over time like these other responsible parties did. We saw that they weren't going to take care of it, and we stepped forward to try to do something about it. So to that effect, I applaud you, and I applaud the, you know, looking at the city as a whole in that manner. Thank you. Alderman Hanauer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mark, first of all, you, your staff, I had a meeting with you guys today. You guys do a great job, and I support you guys 100%. You, you guys, and it's not just with the infrastructure. It's with tree branch pickup, garbage, everything. So um, to your staff, especially, um, you know, the, the people that are out on the streets, uh, I, I think all of us appreciate that. A um, couple things. <clears throat> we have rules. We have rules that we have to abide by. And um, an interesting comment by Alderman McMiniman was that he, he agreed that the engineers, you know, they recommended the, the decisions. But I recall about three or four months ago when we had an issue about Linhart Road, the very same engineers said the road was met the specs. And Alderman McMinman criticized them, saying that they, their, their opinion didn't matter. So you can't speak out of both sides of your mouth. You're either with them or you're not. Now, I, I voted to hold that because we have a rule about the pre prevailing wage and about local, local um, uh, contractors. Mm -hmm. And just because... If they didn't follow it, we can't just throw it out there and let them do it. It's our responsibility to follow the rules all the time. Not, not whenever they're good for you or good for me or, you know, not good for somebody else and we're still going to go through it. But don't say that you, you're 100% backing of the engineers when I know for a fact, if, and if, if you want me to go, I'll ask the clerk to pull it up. You said that what the engineer said didn't matter because that road was junk, talking about Linhart. So either you're with the engineers or you're not. Mr. Mayor, I need to go ahead, Mr. Well, Mayor. The uh, good news is, and Nate Bottom can come up if he wishes, but uh, I asked him to, and this is what yeah. the council's done well, <laughs> is looked at uh, long-term fixes, not kick the can down the road, and Linhart's one of them, Chatham Road's the other one. And we have uh, jurisdictional boundaries. You have Jerome, Leland Grove, and the city on Chatham Road, um, of course, Jerome had upgraded theirs about four years ago, I think, and then the city's doing theirs. But I asked uh, Nate to come with a long-term solution where we don't have to keep revisiting this issue. Uh, so the goal, it's a high priority to repave Chatham Road in its entirety within the next two years, I believe. But going forward is how do you have that intergovernmental agreement where you continue the overlay? or whatever needs to be done so we don't have to keep struggling with this. Linhart Road is the other one that we're working on the developer's agreement, but moving forward with uh, quality uh, two-lane road uh, with regards to Linhart, uh, because what we don't want is what happens out at our trail elevator. We're struggling with Hilltop. How do we take these old two-county lane roads and bring them up to today's standards based on the development that's happening around them? So if... Uh, Engineer Bottom would like to come forward and make any comments uh, with regards to that. Uh, that'd be appreciated. How's that for putting you on the spot? Yeah, other than, yeah. <laughs> He's a it, man of many words, too. It comes down to money. That's all it comes down to. Right. Yeah, so. But if you'd uh, like to comment on, you know, those. 
Yeah. And ours going to be road done. project, this right? Year, right. So. And hilltop and uh, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's correct. We we assess them, and then um, we are trying to uh, you know improve the surface for Chatham Road. Uh, we are planning on overlaying it, starting from the south section to the north, and uh, as well as working on the intergovernmental agreement with Leland Grove to do some mastic pass uh, mastic patching for their portion. And then we will also be doing a mill and overlay and a structural overlay for Lenhart Bunker Hill and uh, and Isles Avenue, which we will be proposing and bringing to the council with the contract this uh, this construction season. So Alderman McMinimum and then Alderman Hanauer. Yeah. As far as Linhart Road, as I recall, our city code provides for two aspects, at least in a judgment by the city council, whether to approve a subdivision that will feed into Linhart Road. One was there's some specifics in our code having to do with minimum standards that the road must accommodate. But then there's another section of our city code that has to do with whether the additional traffic will uh, create problems for the um, access road, which would be Lenhart. And that was a difference of judgment. And you're correct. We had a difference of opinion about that. But I think the constituents that were out there on Lenhart Road thought that the increased traffic was dangerous. That's a non-lighted road. There's no striping on that road. It's a rolling road. There's problems with the ditches, et cetera. And so I agreed with uh, the constituents. And it wasn't anecdotal evidence that someone referred to that night. There was uh, very uh, substantial uh, testimony, including from the, uh, the uh, New Berlin superintendent, as I recall, and uh, many others that use that road every day. So we had a difference of uh, judgment on that. And I think, in part, our city engineer was thinking, well, if we improve the road fast enough, then the problem goes away. But I think others think that, well, uh, let's improve the road first before we approve the subdivision. So it's just, just a difference of opinion about that. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, Nate, or on this, um, on this uh, Chatham Road uh, resurface, are we going to take into account, like, the ditches along? It's farther to the south. I know uh, Lin, um, uh, in Lincolnshire, right outside Lincolnshire, we've had constant problems with flooding in those ditches. I know we've gone out for a bid that's been came back a couple times pretty high. Is, is that going to be included in these costs, or is it just the overlay? We were talking about the section to the north. That is more so a, a modernization piece that okay. it needs to be upgraded storm with a storm sewer, curb and gutter. And also, if we had a stormwater utility, that could address the issue ahead of even a modernization of the road. Okay. But we do not have the funding at this time. All right. Thank you. And if you could... Uh, yeah. On WTAX, uh, two qu questions came up. Uh, I think I answered them correctly, but you're the expert. One was with regards to light <coughs> synchronization and the modernization. So if you could uh, talk about what we currently have in place and the need to manually do that process and the direction we're moving. And the second question was with regards to Hilltop Road and uh, the walkable, bikeable pathway that we're uh, working towards. So right now we have an ancient affic asset traffic management system, uh, which we need to upgrade. Uh, right now we're util utilizing icons and uh, that needs to be upgraded and which will help us with improving our, our timing uh, as well as upgrading our controllers, um, which we are planning on doing as part of the traffic signal modernization project, which the director touched upon um, where we would be modifying 23 traffic signals uh, as well as 49 controllers and cabinets with the first phase of the project. So that will obviously be the first phase, but uh, we'll need to branch out and, um, and upgrade our controllers and cabinets throughout the city. Now which on was the, a $20 uh, million dollar number. Right, uh, if there's that areas was that the, have issues with light synchronization, um, I guess they could report them, and then is there, what's the, uh, is there a remedy for a temporary fix, or how's that work? We will assess them um, based upon the call, so please call in and we'll enter it into City Works as a service request, and then um, our, our traffic engineer, uh, one of the hats right now um, <laughs> I'm wearing, but uh, we, we'll go ahead and evaluate the situation and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll evaluate it. And then also uh, CWLP traffic operations helps us out in regards to uh, uh, troubleshooting the intersection if it's a, if it's a detection issue. Just call uh, 789-2255. 
that's correct. Very and then uh, if we need to, we'll call 7892-2121. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct, they'll call us. Uh, and then in regards to Hilltop Road, um, we're just wrapping up the engineering. We have 90% plans complete, and then uh, we will need to do some land acquisition for that project, uh, which will um, be installing a multi-use trail along the east side from the Lost Bridge Trail to Destiny Drive for the, for the first phase. And then we'll also uh, make some sidewalk connections to the uh, to the other subdivisions uh, that will tie into the to the bike trail. So that will that go from is it Old Rochester Road all the way to go from Destiny down to it, the, the first phase will be Destiny to uh, the 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 Lost Bridge Trail. Okay. Uh, in regards that we have some engineering issues where we would need to do some road realignment possibly in the future and uh, and right of way issues further to the uh, further to the south. Okay. Very good. Alderman Sino. Oh, no, um, there's a, a program, since you mentioned the, the trails, there's a program, so if you could see me when we get done, uh, it's a free program that will allow birdhouses to be put along the bird trails, I mean the bike trails, so if you could see me, I'll give you that information. Okay. <laughs> so you can run into the bird trails when you're, when you're riding your bike down there? <laughs> it's bike trails, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Birdhouses for the bike trails, there you go. Any other questions, comments? Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Director, as well. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the December 18th, 2018 City Council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. They have moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances into the record of this City Council meeting. So moved. Second. They have moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda in the record of this city council meeting. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Yep, Mayor, I'd like to have 2018-555 uh, put on the debate agenda, please. Second. Been moved and second to uh, <coughs> move 2018-555 to the debate. Well, what does 555 to pertain to? For the boulevard to... Let me pull it up. Well, ordinance approving a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $30,191 from unbudgeted, unappropriated fund balance in the MacArthur Boulevard TIF Fund for the Office of Economic Development. Any other questions on that? All in favor of the uh, motion of the consent agenda, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Five six two. Five six two. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage, with the exception of 2018-555. Move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, discussion. Yes. There's a ordinance on the consent agenda, which it's a resolution. It has to do with the carbon um, capture. Right. And um, so the council approved a uh, basically a letter of interest at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. And I just want to state for the record, Mr. Clerk, that I understand that our um, agreement to allow this project to go forward for further study is a, uh, a non-binding commitment by the city. And I just want to state for the record that I am concerned about whether this project will create distraction for our utility and um, and um, take our uh, focus away from more important projects. And so therefore I'm reserving judgment to a later time regarding whether we go forward. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the uh, motion to approve the consent agenda on final passage, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. So just to clarify, Mr. Clerk, that I didn't have a no vote. I just want to make a comment. Right. Thank you. Noted. And the consent agenda passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Agenda number 2017-103, 2017 2017-436, 2017-489, 2018-118, 2018-322, and 2018-395 remain tabled or in committee. Next item on the agenda is agenda number 2000. 18-285, an ordinance amending Chapter 100 of the 1988 City of Springfield Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to 
criteria to be used when granting funds from revenue generated by the hotel and motel tax. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-285 on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to amend agenda number 2000. Or do I need to have a vote on that? No. Just go to the amendment? Yes. On uh, agenda number 2018-285. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded, and there's uh, just one amendment, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, the discussion on the proposed amendment? Yeah, a couple of aldermen have uh, approached me about number two, that it switched from where we had it that funds granted will not be used for normal operating expenses for the organization sponsoring the event, to now it reads may be used. Um, there's still some concern there from several of the aldermen that we're not we're wanting this money because it's coming from a tourism source to go toward promoting the city of Springfield and I think it's you know I've had one person suggest limiting it to 20 percent I had another person say we shouldn't be doing operating expenses so I just want to ask what the what's the will of the council what what direction do you guys want to go personally I would rather go not going operating expenses at all Alderwoman Turner. You know, um, I know this has been a, a topic of discussion for several weeks, and I think it's, it's common knowledge that I have some serious concerns about uh, trying to put trying to put these limitations on this funding. We already have the Convention and Visitors Advisory Board that's working on it, and there are always going to be a certain set of circumstances that each one of us is going to want to call into question and want to say, well, I don't want it to apply to this because, I don't want it to apply to that because. So I think that we should follow the discretion of the Convention and Vis Visitors Advisory Board and allow them to make a recommendation to, to us, and then we can either vote yes or no, or if we want to add other uh, requirements on a specific request, we can do so. I just think that we are uh, hog tying ourselves as well as those uh, opportunities that we may want that we may want to fund. So just like we're having this discussion about the operational expenses, we're going to have the same discussion about uh, the promotion and marketing of tourism because everybody sitting around this horseshoe has a different idea of what they feel an event that's promoting tourism would be. So I personally <coughs> would, cannot support the amendment I, because I think that I support putting some constraints on the funding, but I think that it should be up to the Convention and Visitors Advisory Board and their discretion on what they want to bring to the City Council as a recommendation. Alderman Proctor. Yeah, um, to the sponsor. So I guess two questions, oh, three questions. What are you defining as operational expenses? What would that entail? And then do all four items have to be met for it to be considered? Is it like all of it? And then the third is number four, the compliance by the organization receiving the grant with section 37.6 through 37.64, what does that entail? I believe your last question refers to something that we did before. Uh, Mr. Zirkle, is that the section where we're requiring them to give a, a report back at the end? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we'd already passed previously. Okay. Right. And as for the definition of operational expenses, I believe that uh, Mr. Zirkle was using a legal definition where operating expenses would be like rent, salary, um, physical purchases, things of that nature. Um, it would be standard operating expenses along those lines, whereas um, when Scott came up and described, if you want to come up, when Scott was describing what promoting and marketing, it's anything that brings people to the city. It, it could be the advertising and the different forms, it could be promotional materials being handed out. Um, I think you mentioned two other things as well. Well, it's, uh, generally, 
we promote to 50 miles outside of the city or visitors are determined from being 50 miles outside of the of the city radius so when we look at promoting tourism or, or marketing we're looking in that direction of outside of the those boundaries is that what you refer to Alder? i believe so uh, so so if we're going by that just keep in mind everybody if we're going by that definition if we have a a small festival downtown that's basically a uh a citywide festival or a citywide uh, celebration, this funding can't be used for that because we're not marketing that to people 50 miles outside. We're, we're bringing people to downtown Springfield. Now, I believe one of the requests that you had made previously, and Mr. Zirkel, um, you had changed the wording of the first line of letter H where the final determination is at the discretion of the city council. I believe the the reason for that wording is that the city council can choose to pass it anyway. Is that correct? Yeah. The the changes, if I might, uh, there were essentially two revisions uh, based on the discussion that uh, took place. I think at the uh, last council meeting, one was to point out, <clears throat> I think, Alderman Donnell and ask about. Uh, wouldn't it be discretionary on the part of the council? The answer is yes, but I did add language to make that clear that a, it's a judgment call, meaning it's not, you know, mandatory, meaning it's something that would be subject to debate, you know, discussion. So to add the language about final determination would be subject to the discretion of the council, meaning you're not bound by a specific thing if you want to give more weight to one factor or, or another factor or disregard them or, or think that there's an overriding reason to do something. Um, with respect to number two, the question about the operational expenses, it was my understanding from the last meeting that uh, one of the concerns was that if there is a grant to do an event, uh, by definition, part of the expenses would be, you, you would uh, find eligible part of those that, and I added language, expenses directly related to the event. To the actual event. So itself. that was to try to address, I think Alderman Turner actually brought that issue up about how do you address uh, where it's a one-time event, for example, festival or something of that nature, then um, by definition, their operational expense is really going right directly to that event only. So it was just an attempt to uh, melt those two points together. However, uh, keep in mind that the council's final determination is a matter of discretion. Uh, you could exclude number two and still be in the same position, it would be a matter of debate or judgment or discussion uh, if that uh, was the pleasure of the council. Alderman Hanauer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess the, one of my concerns is um, <laughs> I, I, what TIF we only, the maximum is 30 percent, or what do we yeah, generally go 30? Right. A guide a is guide 30. A guide from the state right. is 30. Well, I mean, I think that, I think that we should we should put like a 20 percent or 30, 25 something um uh you know we don't want to get into the the business of of having to go audit these these things i mean there some of them are big some of them are small we don't want to get into that business do we i mean if we say we we're only going to give them 20 percent of their budget or something that would that would be a set amount or have them have them give us how are we going to do this? Are we going to have them give us their, for like um, advertising? Are they going to come in and give us the bill and we pay it that way? So it's not, it's a up to, I mean, it, uh, I, I understand, you know, I think it's good. I just think we need to set a limit because we shouldn't be paying 75%, 50% of an event. To, um, uh, you know, I just don't think think we should be in that business because then we're floating all the money for that particular event um, I don't know if, if you know how are we going to determine if it's operational expenses or not is, is my concern yep. All well, the right oh, go ahead yeah I, I certainly think one three and four on on those amendments with the direct related to promoting marketing and tourism um, the advisory board and then also the the reporting of the grant process has already been passed. I mean, what's in motion there? Um, you know, this council has certainly said they want the final say, and that's that's absolutely respectful. 
We asked for the Tourism Advisory Council. Obviously, that's going through. That's going to vet a lot of this. I think a lot of these items fall under the Tourism Advisory Council. So I think it's really up to the council to decide. I think you're at this point of the operational expenses and what you're going to do there and how far you're going to go down the road. I mean, and again, the Advisory Council, I think a lot of these will be consistent with what they will ask and what they will vet. There'll be that grant process moving through, right, through the city. So we'll look, the Tourism Council, Advisory Council will look at that. So um, I think they'll, br they'll bring good recommendations to the, to the council. Alderman Repath. You know, I think I got my question answered by the Corporation Council and Alderman Thailand, but we got to have parameters that we can that come to your committee and say, hey, we got a special thing going on here that's outside the scope of this thing. Mm -hmm. So will that happen, Mayor? It's a good question. I think the I think it goes with all of what Turner was saying is uh, some flexibility because you never know what tomorrow brings. And I'll use a perfect example was the web.com tour. Uh, when we first presented that sponsorship, that was the argument was the 50 mile radius because it was the heads and the beds. And, you know, my position was, well, they visit the restaurants. I mean, that's where uh, some of that visitorship, you know, happens and it will generate uh, income for others and the domino impact. So that's, uh, you know, that's one of those gray areas that you have to be cognizant of. But if we pass the amendment as is, uh, it's a flexibility of, uh, you know, to, I guess, make an exception. The council can make an exception, right, at any time with regards to uh, requests that would come in that we might not have thought about that's, every circumstance. I, mean, I think Alderman Tynan is certainly on on point here that he doesn't want to be used for salaries uh, and those general operating costs. I understand, completely understand. I don't think we want to see that either. But there probably needs to be some some give as well. So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good answer. According to Corporation Council. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is all of these kind of things remember generally speaking are discretionary on the part of the council uh, this there are two generally just very briefly there are two general types of decisions the council can be called upon to make some are purely ministerial that are mandatory others are discretionary or policy matters that's what this is meaning that there's not a right or wrong these are meant to be guidelines but it doesn't uh, mean that the council cannot deviate. It's a discretionary decision-making process. I knew that. I just wanted it on the record. Thank and Alderman Hanauer brought up a good point with regards to, uh, you know, how responsible is Convention Visitors Bureau going to need to be with regards to uh, if it goes through the council um, and it's approved, uh, we don't want to get into uh, back and forth with regards to, oh, you didn't check if it was operational. It should have been checked or vice versa. So how much, uh, what's the process for regulating that? Or is there the need to regulate it once it's granted by the council? Can, and the, the um, I would think the compliance would be up to the organization to adhere what they tell the council at that point in time. Is that how that would be gauged? And they would have to, remember, make a detailed report mm -hmm. uh, under those provisions that it had been passed earlier, uh, indicating what the expenditures were for and what the result was. I believe my memory is that I think it's within 30 days of the date of the event. I believe so. And that includes uh, indicating how the money was spent. So there would be a written report to OBM and then back to the council. Mm -hmm. But I just don't want... Council coming back to Convention Visitors Bureau, oh, you were supposed to check it. Uh, shouldn't have been spent for operational. And I guess that's the confusion is what's going to be expected. But I think it would be at the presentation or the request of the organization that we need to fine tune at that point in time what the funds are going to be spent on. And then that's what the report would be geared towards. That would be my interpretation. The intent was to have this be a lot like the TIF, mm -hmm. where when they're coming in, we know what the money is supposed to be going for. So whatever, and I don't necessarily know that we need to, you know, we would have whatever application that you guys come up with that can address, you know, that part of this. I don't necessarily know that it has to be in this ordinance. Okay. Alderman Hanard, do you have anything? Yeah. Um, and then Senor after that. I just, uh, and, and I, I see it more like the TIF to where they would submit eligible expenses and then we pay it on that. It's, it, I don't know if that's, if we have to go farther on, on this uh, um, 
ordinance, uh, corporate counsel, or I, I just I, I still would like to see a certain percentage max on these. Um, certainly, the council can override it if if necessary, but at least it's a guideline for for your group to, to go through. You know, if we if we don't have it, they can they can send something for fifty or sixty percent or whatever. But I would rather have a, a certain amount for for the advisory council to to have. Um, I, I think um, I, I like what we're doing, but I think that we need to. There there needs to be some some types of. We've got to figure. We got to get the the right the right steps in place. Um, and I think that, like you said, you want it to be like the TIF. Well, I don't know that this definitely does the TIF. And I, I, don't, I don't know if you're willing to do this, but maybe we need to, to get the TIF ordinance and, and maybe try to mirror that, you know. And, and I believe on the TIF ordinance, it's more of a policy, the third. It's not actually in code. Policy, it was more not. of a policy that we put in place. Is that correct? correct. Right. So we could do the same thing, or it goes before the EDC on the TIF. Uh, the same thing would be with the advisory council. Uh, but we would, as a, the administration is, say if it's above the 30 percent, or the third actually, or below, or what have you. Alderman Donlin. Yeah, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Senor is supposed to go next. So, in, and then when they, Donlin. When they request the funds, do we have anything in place that says, okay, what are you requesting the funds for, and, and what are you going to use it for? So, if we have that in place, then. All this conversation is moot because you'll know what the funds are being requested and what they're going to be used for. So wouldn't that cut out the end result of us having to go back and say, what is it being used for? That's the local grant application process, right, right. that we currently have. Yeah. So, so there's an actual process for applying for a local grant in place right now. So if that's in place, then that would take care of this after conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. Alderman Donlin, and then I think that's how I started all this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I, I always I always struggle when we're <laughs> okay. when we're trying to legislate legislate the, the a process rather than and, and I understood this amendment to be and the ordinance to be more of a establishing guidelines and criteria general generally and, and leaving it to the department and the advisory board to come up with the, with this with the steps in place. But one through the, this dialogue, that's why it's good we have this in open forum like this. One of the things that came to mind is. When it comes to TIF, we do, and, and the council does approve uh, a redevelopment agreement. And it's pretty specific as far as what is eligible, how it's going to get paid, what is to be used for, and there's no variation, at least not supposed to be any variation, <coughs> from that redevelopment agreement. Maybe as a part of the process, there could, and, and maybe building upon this application you referred to, Director, we could come up with some kind of an agreement as a part of the presentation to the council that outlines what the money is going to be used for very specifically. So therefore, when uh, it's presented to us, we know what we're agreeing to. We know how and when it's going to get paid. We know what it's going to be used for. And it's up to the entity to come back to us and report, yeah, we followed this agreement. That's just a thought, food for thought. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be covered under that number four. Alderman from Gen Z. Uh, I think all the aldermen have touched on the fact that we need to have an application that outlines what they're going to be spending the money on and what they're going to be using it for. And I think that once we get that application outlined and we have it available, that will solve almost all of the problems that we have here tonight. Correct. I think I think that lies in that grant application and that we can just expand upon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? I think, I think I'm comfortable as it is. All those in favor of the motion to amend, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. No. Motion passes. Discussion on the ordinance as amended. All those in favor of the ordinance as amended, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes nine voting yes, one voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2018-541, an ordinance approving an, an amended professional services agreement with Andrews Engineering, Inc. regarding ash impoundments and coal combustion res residuals strategies and assistance with legal litigation case and authorizing additional funding in the amount of $151,900 for an amount 
total amount not to exceed $315,900 for the Office of Public Utilities. So Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-541 on final passage. Second. It moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2018-4545. I'd ask this to be referred back to committee. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? What does this pertain to, Mayor? It's uh, pertaining to uh, Lake Springfield and changes to the ordinance of Chapter 96. Anything else on that, Council? It, it's, I, I would just say it's pretty uh, complex with a lot of changes, and there have been a few questions asked about could there be some more time to look at it, and so the thought process was just send it back to committee. There's no immediate urgency to it, and uh, that would give time to uh, go through all of the changes. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 2018-547, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the City of Springfield, Illinois, and Shane R. Klontz and Lynette E. Klontz for property located on Bissell Road. Chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the City Council for purposes of holding a public hearing regarding the annexation agreement. So moved. Second. Second. Moved in discussion. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing is open. Does anybody wish to address the City Council regarding this annexation agreement? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular meeting of the City Council. So moved. Second. They moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-547 on final passage. Moved. Second. moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the annexation passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2018-548, an ordinance authorizing execution of an annexation agreement between the City of Springfield, Illinois, and Johnson Development Company, LLC, for property located at 3207 Mathers Road. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the City Council for purpose holding a public hearing regarding this annexation agreement. I'll move. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any, the public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address the council regarding this annexation agreement? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular mm -hmm. meeting of the city okay. council meeting. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-548 on final passage. So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the annexation ordinance passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2018-549. In no, we did that. We don't have to. We just yes. pass. No, we have to do this too. Yes. Okay. Agenda number 2018-549, ordinance annexing certain described properties owned by Johnson Development Company, LLC, located at 3207 Mathers Road. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-549 on final passage. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the ordinance vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Voting is now open. The ordinance passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Alderman McMinimum. Uh, yeah, just a point of order. Yes, I, sir. I, I got a couple of text messages that the meeting is not being broadcast. Uh, yeah, there's a Facebook post about that before we started. And it's not on Firefox or any other streaming either. Mm -mm. So. Are they replayed tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Oh. He's uh, filming it. There's been an issue with the uh, live broadcast, and so we're filming it, and it will be shown tomorrow, I believe. Nine, two, and seven. Thank and you. the audio is still working. Is that correct? No audio. No audio. So, uh, pardon me. 
Springfield Daily has got it live streaming on Facebook right now. Okay. It's very important for the council roundup. Yes, no, is. the audio is still going for okay. the clerk's recording. Very the good. live broadcast is not working because we were upgrading all the technology. So Tony is filming. It will air tomorrow at regular times. It, was also, it will also be on YouTube, and then people can watch it streaming as well. So it's just not live right now. And the audio will be on right after. Correct. Five. But if people have Facebook or Twitter, they can watch it through Springfield Daily, which we put on social media as well. So they go to our website for Springfield Daily? No. Or how's that work? Facebook. No, through social media, through Facebook or Twitter. Unless your website also has it. <laughs> Do you have a website? Or, and what's the website address? we're not live, nobody's going to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Maybe I want to so, do it. Maybe I want to get the dual site. <laughs> like, no. Nice try. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not tech savvy as you know. <laughs> he stinks the three. Case in point. Right, Mr. Zirkel? <laughs> <laughs> That's what little sisters are for. Efficiency yeah. in government, right there. Teaching, line, teaching new things. Very good. Uh, any other questions on that? Alderman McMinimum or anybody else? Very good. Thank you, you for bringing that, that up, well, though. Mr. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda is agenda number 2018 555. Ordinance approving a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $30,191 from unbudgeted, unappropriated fund balance in the MacArthur Boulevard TIF Fund for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. Chair will entertain a motion. Moved uh, for passage. It moved, is there a second? And this pertains to? This pertains to, um, and perhaps um, Ms. Izell can explain it better, but I think we're under contractual obligation, so this is, uh, a situation where there's really shouldn't be any discretion for the council. The High V agreed to a redevelopment agreement uh, some five Hy-Vee. years ago, and it was one of those TIF agreements where they don't receive any money up front. Instead, they receive accruals from the TIF as um, increments Eight, occur. Months, yes. And so there was increment beyond what was expected at the start of the budget that season. That was not budgeted for, so. This is the additional increment, so we need to a budget appropriate it so that we can cut a check to High V to fulfill their obligation. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Just a, Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick question, Val. Um, what, uh, Director? What what is it being reimbursed for? What what, did, what eligible cost? What? Pardon me. What eligible cost is? Okay, it being? this isn't. This is the increment. There, there were just instead of doing the actual redevelopment agreement. And since I wasn't here, right. Mr. Zirkle, I hope you, you and the mayor can help me on this. Well, a I can bit help you more. too. I mean, it was a twenty million dollar <coughs> project, and the city council at the time provided a roughly three million dollar a TIF um, redevelopment agreement, Great and project, it was yeah. for um, land purchases, yes. reconstruction. Um, there was Some a gas station there, uh, removal of the gas station, and, this would and we're still paying down the, the three million reimbursal. dollar obligation. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Thank right. You. Reimbursable. Yeah. Right. Correct. The, uh, it is my understanding, and I I do recall reading that some uh, period of time ago. But essentially, um, they upfronted the money uh, for all the work. This is a reimbursement based on the Incorrect. development contract of these pre-approved expenses. <clears throat> so. They actually have, uh, they're taking the chance that over the next 20 years, they'll be able to recoup that money through the increment they're generating. Alderman, happy that, to provide okay. that information. That, that, that answered my, that answer my questions. Yeah. I appreciate that, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, very good. Great project. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. The ordinance passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is number 2018-564, resolution authorizing an advisory question of public policy for submission on the ballot for the consolidated election to be held on April 2nd, 2019, regarding Capital Township. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2018-564 on final passage. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and second. Any discussion? A discussion. Alderman Senor? What, what is, I mean, since the county already passed their part for this, what, and I know you said that the, the, uh, the boundaries of this are coterminous with the city of Springfield, but also the city of Springfield lies within the county, because uh, I had a, a, a long time figuring that out. So how is this 
what is this, what's going to be the reaction of this if it is put on the ballot and it is voted on versus the county already having accepted it and voted for it on their, on their ballot? Well, the intent is to work out an agreement with the county, um, but if they, we can't come to a resolution on an agreement with regards to consolidating to the county, then give, gives the city the option of having the advisory question on the upcoming election. And it's just an advisory question. So by question. that, uh, what would happen then is, uh, what, what happens now is the county, it's passed, uh, not surprisingly, uh, with regards to that, there's an extra step for the county to go to the state legislature. They have to have legislative action to change, to be able to obtain or um, take over Capital Township. The way state statute's written right now is it can go to a municipality like Springfield because they have like boundaries. Uh, on our step, if it passes on the advisory question, then we would just go to Capital Township and have their board approve it. And so if they, uh, if it, say the county, uh, city can't come to an agreement, uh, then it moves to the advisory question. It passes on April 2nd. Then we will in turn go to the Capital Township Board and ask them to dissolve into the city of Springfield. And they, by the vote of the uh, Capital Township Board, it would be dissolved into the city of Springfield. So they, the Capital Township Board would still have to approve it even though it was, the advisory question would be passed on our Correct. Election in April. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? I have a question. Alderman Donovan? I have a, cl a clarification of legal counsel. My understanding is that the state statute presently says that in order for a binding referendum, which this ordinance is not, uh, to, to essentially dissolve Capital Township, that there would need to be action by, according to existing statute, by this body, and the township board, hmm. and then it goes to a binding referendum to the uh, to, to the to the electors or the voters. That's not what this is about today. If this were to get passed this evening and get on the ballot, there would still need to be a binding referendum in order for, in other words, two two bodies would have to act, two public bodies, and there would be, need to be a binding referendum put on the ballot. And it's, it, it's, that's essentially the same thing as the the one that was put on the put on the ballot last November by Capital Township, not the county. It has no binding impact, is that correct? Yeah, both both uh, the one, uh, the re referendum that was completed in November was advisory. Right. Uh, this is also advisory. Thank you, I just wanted to make sure I understood it correctly. Appreciate it. And so what would these steps be if it, uh, again, hopefully we'll be able to work out the agreement and what the agreement essentially says is that we'd have an oversight board made of a of a two well this is a, a draft uh, recommendation or suggestion to be discussed uh, that would include um, a couple of aldermen a couple of uh, county board members maybe a person at large it's similar to uh, what we have with our 911 system uh, and then oversight to the fund which have a spe specified uh, oversight of the funds that would be generated now and into the future of the capital township tax that would be um, if that prolongs. And then they would make sure that the funds are allocated to either energy assistance or job training or whatever the case may be. The other portion of the agreement we're working on is that it's not a one-time uh, refunding or uh, rebating of property taxes because that's the whole intent of uh, township consolidation is the city provides the majority of the services with regards to road work. Uh, in an answer to your question, Alderman Senor, uh, Capital Townships within the city of Springfield, we provide the, we just heard from Director Mahoney, we provide all the road work for Capital Township. Unlike Woodside Township, they have their own road crew or what have you. So that's the greatest differential uh, with regards to that. So we would uh, make that determination moving into the future what that rebate of property taxes would be. So it continues on. It's not a one-time splash. Um, and there's some other you know, points to be discussed, how that would uh, operationally transpire uh, with regards to that. But with regards to if we have to move forward to uh, the referendum, the advisory referendum, and it passes, what are the steps of action to the consolidation of Capital Township? Well, uh, under the existing 
uh, statute, there would have to be formal action by township board, by the uh, city council, and then ultimately a formal binding referendum. Okay. And that would be within the uh, jurisdiction of the uh, city, which encompasses the uh, township. The issue uh, about the potential intergovernmental agreement, you may recall that this is in, in some ways uh, not uh, unusual or atypical because the city had entered into a intergovernmental agreement with the county regarding, for example, the health department. Um, there, there was a intergovernmental working agreement that allowed certain of the jurisdictions to be uh, shared or interchanged. There was also one, you may recall, with the uh, park district that actually involved, similar to this, an intergovernmental agreement that transferred the uh, taxing authority mm -hmm. from the city to the park district. So there's, there's a lot of precedent, if you will, for trying to uh, uh, follow the uh, kind of a, a cooperative arrangement among the various uh, uh, jurisdictions to try to work out a, uh, a formula or a process that would meet all the requirements. Mm -hmm. So the city and the county have done it before, the park district's done it before. Uh, the, the question is how does that, what, uh, what will that finally look like? And of course it has to come back to the city council you know, to be voted on in the form of an intergovernmental agreement. Very good. Alderman Repath. So uh, the county had their <laughs> referendum in the November election and we're considering doing this ourselves. But if we, without the referendums on the county side or the city side, can't the city and the county and the township get together and work out an intergovernmental agreement without a resolution or a referendum? That's what we're trying to work towards. So if we we're able to work out the intergovernmental agreement, uh, then I think it would take the action of the state legislature still with regards to the city's assistance, or how would that work? Well, uh, it depends on the uh, nature of what might be uh, transferred back and forth. The county, I think, uh, it's my understanding, they're working on some type of a a specific legislation that would address specifically Capital Township. Uh, there's been, uh, uh, sp it, it's not clear because we haven't seen how that all fits together, uh, but uh, there may be some opportunity to address it in that process, depending if it becomes kind of a hybrid, uh, like uh, has happened like with the Park District. Because, <clears throat> because <laughs> the county does not have the, the the equipment, the public works equipment, the, we're maintaining the roads right now. Uh, there's the, there's other areas within the capital township that they are probably have expertise in. So it, it makes common sense that we all work together with the county and with the township to try to work this thing out. And even if no matter what happens tonight or what happened in November, it doesn't matter. We we really need to do that because everybody wants to consolidate government because there's too many, too, too much. Right. That's where we're trying to get to, what's that uh, ultimate spot. Okay. And you have been in contact with the second county minister? Right. Okay. Hoping to meet uh, next week. Thank you. Alderwoman Turner? Um, I know that we've, we've had this long discussion. We're still having this long discussion, and I have no doubt that as all, most things of this nature come down, this will fail, it'll, and it will fail along party lines. So, and just because people talk about consolidation and it's a and it's a good thing I'm not necessarily convinced that because all consolidation is is good so um, so I don't I don't I'm not convinced and I know there are a number of other people who are not convinced that college, consolidation with it, with the city or the county is necessarily a good thing perhaps it's a better thing if capital township re remains an autonomous entity governed by an elected township board that uh, handles their business ex extremely well. Uh, and, and I also, I'm gonna support this, I'm gonna vote for it, but I don't necessarily believe that there has to be an alternative to the county's proposal because uh, as uh, Alderman Donlin alluded to and has been confirmed, any uh, consolidation of a governmental entity will require legislative approval. And I can say uh, without equivocation that I doubt that that will be forthcoming. So, you know, we can go through this process, but I think that we all need to just consider the fact that perhaps Capital Township should remain what it is today. 
Alderman Proctor. Yeah, I, I share kind of some of Alderman Turner's concerns about the uh, how it's operating now. Because my concern is um, about the 9,000 constituent cases that are handled for general assistance currently right now. And I just haven't seen a, a plan brought forth by you, Mr. Mayor, about how the city would handle that caseload coming through. Because anything that jeopardizes the quality of that service being provided would be a hindrance to 9,000 constituents receiving that <coughs> assistance. Um, the process seems to be working well right now. And so I think we're just basically, we can barely do branch pickup correctly, it seems like. And so taking on this, this case, I just want to see a plan what that would look like, and I just haven't seen that yet. Well, the plan would be uh, right now how it works is in conjunction with the county, they're subsidizing county payroll right now. And so we talk about transparency in government. Uh, that's what we need to come forward unless you're for it going to the county, which I'm against because it should be with the city. Uh, we do provide assistance through CWLP with regards to uh, utility assistance. Uh, I have my full faith and confidence in the employees of the city of Springfield to take this on uh, and do it uh, ably with regards to economic development or uh, community relations. They provide assistance right now for housing and other initiatives. So uh, how it would work is you would have that uh, transition where you would have the capital township employees. And we've identified the city of Springfield, if it one for us to identify a half a million dollars of savings, uh, that's what we push for. Director McCarty is not here today, I don't believe, but uh, he did the analysis and he said we could save at least a half million dollars a year and that would be rebated back to the property owners. And the city of Springfield has held the, their line on property taxes since the 1980s. And so that's what the whole concept of capital township or township consolidation is if it mirrors a city's boundary that already provides the services with regards to police protection, fire protection, uh, streets, that's what we do for Capital Township. And it's to provide property tax relief, which in turn puts more money in the individual's pockets so they can go out and shop and do other things. And that's the whole intent. But when the county jumped ahead, because I presented this when I was treasurer, went to the Efficiency Commission, I wrote a letter about it. And uh, they said, well, like, Alderman Turner said, well, we don't think uh, it needs to be consolidated. They're doing these services right now. I questioned it, you know, they rejected it, but then the county this year says it should come to us. And I'm saying not so fast, you know, because uh, it really comes down to how are, you, how are the taxpayers gonna benefit from the consolidation? How do you pro continue the providing of the services? And how do we oversight, <coughs> uh, oversee it? is with regards to the oversight board that I'm recommending if we come to a mutual agreement, um, because we could stop it right now, you know, because maybe the numbers are there on the, on the state level, but uh, that might change. And then so if that's out there, they can always change that. And what we need to do is look after the best interest of our citizens of Springfield to make sure the services are provided, and then that we do provide property tax relief, not only immediately, but moving into the future for our residents. That's what it's about. Alderman McMenamin. Mr. Mayor, I think you're trying to reach a compromise with the county on this, and uh, you sent us an email uh, back on uh, two weeks ago uh, summarizing your meeting with um, uh, manager McFadden, and so I share the view that was expressed earlier that if we can reach an agreement, a cooperation agreement, that's best for both the county and the city. Uh, neither side will get all that they want, but each side will get something of what they want, and that's what politics is all about. It's about compromise. And so uh, I think, Mayor, this allows the process of negotiation to continue. A question is if you do reach an agreement with the county about the, the uh, appropriate sharing of functions and that kind of thing, uh, would, you with, would you recommend that, to the council that we withdraw the referendum, or would the referendum still be necessary if, if you reach an agreement? Yeah, it'd be withdrawn, but there's a certain timeline for it to, uh, to be placed on the ballot. And then once it goes past a certain point, I'm not sure how would that work with the question. Um, I, I, it is my memory that the resolution would have to be adopted and um, uh, submitted by, I believe it is January 14th. Mm -hmm. So if some, uh, an, if an agreement were reached in principle or otherwise, then it wouldn't have to be filed, it wouldn't have to go forward. Uh, 
and so uh, keeping in mind that this is um, advisory, uh, there's then uh, options if the council uh, determines to uh, adopt it uh, this evening, then it doesn't necessarily have to be filed if an agreement, you know, if some type of an agreement is reached. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, uh, I think uh, obviously if we could get a compromise, that'd be the best solution. I question, the one question I have is, and, and nothing against uh, Brian McFadden, but mm -hmm. shouldn't, shouldn't we be talking to the, um, to the, the other board? Because they're the ones who are going to have to, if they vote no, it doesn't matter what we do or what the county does, we're, they're not, they're not going to go anywhere. Um, the, the other aspect, I will be a no vote on this. You know, we look at what our constituents, you know, we've done poll, everybody does polls and all that. Um, I had 5,119 people vote for this out in Ward 10. That was 76.98, almost 77%. Um, to me, they, if they would have voted against it, to me, it would have showed me that they wanted to be with the city and not the county. Um, so with that, and, and quite frankly, with the numbers, the lowest number, and this is without the, the, the um, I, I stripped out the, um, the over, over and, under. and unders, but the lowest percentage of any ward was 71%. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I have faith in my voters that, they're, that they knew what they were voting on. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I've got to go with my voters, and, and so th therefore I'll be a no vote. Yeah, and to answer that question, I think anybody could have uh, predicted that because people are for consolidation. The bottom line is, what does the consolidation mean? How are you going to put money back in your residents' pockets? And it wasn't until we identified the half million dollars of savings, that's when the county came back and said, oh, they put on that. They put out that in the SJR. We're going to say we can save, I think it was like 600000 So now you have this one-upping. And so that's what we want to make sure is that we have fair representation of the capital township residents, which are the city of Springfield residents moving forward. How do we guarantee the property tax relief, not just one big splash of half a million dollars or $600,000 in one year, but moving forward so you don't have escalation of property taxes for those individuals? <clears throat> because really that's double taxation without representation unless the aldermen are representing those individuals. So that's why it's important to move in that direction uh, because that oversight board, which would include some of the city aldermen that would have that oversight and make sure that it goes to the individuals that it should. That was pointed out. Uh, Capital Township was for those to help individuals that need it most for energy assistance, possibly job training, homelessness. Who's addressing homelessness? The city of Springfield is. We're the ones that have to, when the state didn't have the budget, we're the ones that had to step up and uh, cover for helping hands. It wasn't the county, it was the city of Springfield. And so, you know, when they're sitting on $2 million and we're trying to make ends meet, I have an issue with that. Uh, you know, I think we can provide greater oversight, working in conjunction with the county and Capital Township, we're all in it together, but we need to look at our needs of our community the city of Springfield, that's what we're talking about, our city residents, and that's what our voters want. And I think anybody could have predicted, oh, yeah, they're going to pass it. But I guarantee if, if it was for the city's <clears throat> referendum, we'll see the same, you know, we'll see the same thing. What this ordinance does, it provides leverage. It provides, it forces the county to come to the table and work out an agreement with the city of Springfield. If this does not pass, then... Hopefully the state will block it where it doesn't go to the county, but it very well could. And when I met with our legislative representatives, they prefer that we work it out on the local level, and that's what we're trying to do. Work out an amicable solution to make sure that we're providing for the needs of our community and making sure that we have property tax relief for our citizens. That's the bottom line. Any other discussion? All questions. All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the motion did passes I or predict fails. predict this vote or did I predict this vote? Um, <laughs> twice. You predicted it twice. 
Seven voting no, three voting yes. Thank you for those that voted yes. The next item uh, is for first reading, it's no need for emergency passage. The chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place on first reading agenda number 2019-001, an ordinance accepting the lowest bid and authorizing execution of contract PD 19-10-52 with Hudson Robinson Company for the planning, design, and installation of roofing and siding at the Springfield Police Department Academy located at 3501 Keller Plant Road for an amount not to exceed $145,602 for the Springfield Police Department. The chair will entertain a motion to place the agenda on first reading. Second. Be moved and second. Any discussion? Yeah. Is it, is it, was there a, a plan for emergency passage for a reason, all, uh, Mayor? I mean, do they need uh, Is there a problem? Council? Uh, it is my understanding that uh, emergency passage is not required. And I only ask that because, like, if, if there's water pouring into the place, I, you know, that's... Right. No, I don't think so. In talking with the department, it's my understanding that um, it was not, there was no requirement for immediate passage. Did you... Yes. And that's why they were trying to see if they can move a little bit faster. But that's the only reason it was. I would entertain placing an emergency passage. It's it up to you, Mayor, but uh, I don't think there's going to be a problem with it. It's definitely needed. Was it anyone who's been out there could tell you that? Uh, I guess I have a question. Was that a metal roof or just a shingle roof or what? That's a metal roof. The it's the same siding and roof as the canine facility was. So the siding needed done, but it required a, the roof to have an overhang. Or built out of the roof a little bit, so we had to rebid it, um, which is why it's later than it should be. And then we had to have a structural design engineer, but it was supposed to be originally done by like December, but it already got pushed back. Alderman Hanauer, uh, was this budgeted for? Do, do you know was was this in the the budget for last year? I don't. I, it's been a long it's, time, and I, I think it's through the savings of their budget. Yes, uh, it, is. it is. So there budget. are funds there within the budget. They Julie, would you budget. like to? Expound on that. Funds are there. So, I is there a motion to move it for emergency passage? I will, I will change my motion to emergency passage. And I'll second that. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Yep. And the uh, ordinance passes 11 voting yes, none voting no. Thank you very much for all 11 that voted yes. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules in place on first reading agenda number 2019-002 in ordinance amending chapter 37 by adding section 37.34 of the 1988 City of Springfield, Illinois Code of Ordinances as amended pertaining to reimbursement of tax increment finance funds. So moved. Sure. Second. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Yes, we already have a 002 in our packet. So wouldn't this be 11? Yeah, the last, in the packet that we received for first reading, there's already a 002, and it ends at 010. So this would be 011, I think. Is it 011, Counselor? Okay. So uh, for 011, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business coming before City Council? Alderman McMinimum. Mr. Mayor, I think we've got some unfinished business regarding Capital Township. Okay. You know, you, you've worked, you tried to get a compromise, um, and, and the effort to compromise apparently has failed because you, you haven't gotten the support. Uh, I haven't given up yet. We haven't given up. So, you know, if you can go, go to the legislature and find a path, uh, get the legislature to authorize a binding referendum, uh, approval for the city uh, to vote on this um, and and then we can since the uh, the uh, seven aldermen don't want to hear from our own constituents on this question you may have to get uh, some help me? from the legislature think, uh, alderman are you not paying attention didn't you hear that there i think was you have to ask to be spoke if you want to speak you have I to think, get uh, well, you, you always do well, this you're so talking out of line right too. now 
Alderman the Redpath. Path and Moses. We're going to meet uh, next week with the county and work out an agreement. And then if that doesn't work, then I will go to the state legislature. Good. Alderman Redpath. Maybe you didn't hear what Alderman Hanauer said, that the voters voted over 70 percent in the whole city to pass that. So you're not listening to your voters. No. Well, we just interpret it differently. I think, yeah, we do. Okay. So I think the voters are in favor of consolidation, but there's an undecided question about whether they favor consolidation to the county or consolidation to the that? city. Well, because, well, we don't know that for sure, but you sure don't want to find out because you're not allowing our city voters to the uh, city answer voters the question. in my ward voted for that as they did in your well, ward. Well, again, we didn't have a question about did. whether to consolidate with the Pay city. Attention. And you're voting no to whether Pay we attention. should allow It's like you have one option, and that was I it. I think I am so paying real attention. Alderman Hanauer. Well, the, oddly, the funny thing is that this is the largest vote percentage. The vote to go with the county was in Ward 7. You had, oh, you had 4,167 <laughs> people vote yes to go into the county. So if what you're saying is that your, your people don't know what they're voting for, I, I think that's a very bad misrepresentation of the, of the voters in Ward 7. Well, if I may just say, uh, sure. you know, Alderman, the numbers Hannah, don't lie, the, Joe. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie on the residency question, too, because your ward voted 60% in favor of residency, uh, Ralph Hanauer, and then you voted against residency. So, you know, pick your medicine. They really, didn't, they didn't tell me that when I is, ran last four years. We had a referendum. The good news is I'll continue to work with the county and we'll work out an agreement. You, Otherwise, I'll go to the Thank state you. and uh, take care of it. Mayor, can we go out with the uh, older woman Turner's? Permission or help. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you. How about you. that? Mayor, can we go out of order and do we, uh, can I ask if we have an executive session before we go to? Uh, yeah. What we'd like to do is uh, there's been some changes in the budget meetings. Uh, the first budget meeting, I think, is Here's January 10th. That's what I'm asking. And uh, it's going to be all the elected officials, be the mayor's office, the uh, clerk's office, treasurer's office, as well as um, the library. Economic development is going to go on the last night as opposed to the first night. So you're switching up the order. Right, right. Now, I thought we also had a date that was in conflict. Right. On the 16th. 16th? Yes. So can we move that to uh, after the oh, city council meeting night. or committee as a whole on the, um, what Tuesday was that? It's, it's the 16th. 16th. On the 15th? On the 15th. We don't have a choice. Before we can go to the 17th. Would that be all right to move those uh, budget hearings to the 15th? Yeah. Oh. How long is this, the police and fire going to be? Or is that long? Well, hopefully it'll be as quick as that emergency passage. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, are you going to be quick on us? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Can we hold you to that? But the uh, there's not a I don't think uh, many ordinances. There are some. How many zoning cases are there? Uh, not very many. Uh, so I, can we hold presentations that night, Mayor? Yeah, we won't have presentations. We would just go straight to the budget. Could if we, that's okay with everybody. Could we clarify what we're doing, Mr. Mayor? Could we clarify? Yeah. Canceling the, canceling 16th. the 16th. January 16th uh, budget hearings and moving them to the day before, which is a uh, council meeting. Yeah, after the, the council meeting. The 15th. You, you may want to say the calendar. reason for the cancellation is the Good. planning commission. Yeah, yeah, the reason for the cancellation is the planning commission uh, meetings are held here. They already sent out public notices. They've advertised in the paper and so on, so they really can't move them. Okay, that was the missing piece. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alderman Senor? Alderman of New Business. Uh, well, uh, do we have a Talk consensus on the moving from the January 16th to the January 15th date? Yeah. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, say nay. Okay, we'll move that. Thank you very much. Uh, new Business? I'm a senior. Uh, yeah, Chief, can you uh, tell us how the uh, fire, Chief Rain, oh, yeah. can you tell us how the uh, fire re re recruitment turned out, please? Yes, uh, so as reported accurately, our numbers were down. Uh, that was a, um, it, it, it's a global problem with the fire departments right now. Uh, Central Illinois, I'm in com communications a lot with the uh, other chiefs, and it's hard for any of us to explain. Uh, but uh, through uh, recruiting efforts through HR and the fire department, social media, our final numbers were good. Our final numbers were actually up from last year. Uh, we had 600 people that signed up for the uh, written exam, but only about 400 of, them, of those showed up, uh, which is still higher than what showed up last year or two years ago, I'm sorry. 
Um, I don't have any specifics as far as how that 400, and I think it was 411, I don't know how that breaks down. I'm working with HR and I'll be able to report that to you. You'll get a breakdown for us? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Alderman Tyler? Or do you have a question for the Chief? No. Oh, okay. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Director O'Hearn, if you could come up for a second. Um, two items for the Library Director. The first item is I'd like him to address the Council about the um, initiative that he and his staff took over the Christmas holiday and the results of that? Yeah, absolutely. So we were able to um, light up a life, which is where last year where they were able to uh, donate to individuals um, that children who weren't able to come to the library due to um, lost items, things like that. We were able to raise $1,700 and get 60 individuals back in into the system. So we were really happy about that. We sent them a nice letter. It's a nice little um, present holiday gift from the library as well. So we're very, very excited about that. And uh, we thought it was a big success again. Okay, and then Mr. Zirkel, if I go the wrong, if I can't do what I'm doing here, stop me. Uh, Mr. O'Hearn, I'd like you to address, we apparently have someone who's signed up to talk to us about having been suspended from the library. Yeah. My first question is, is this person been treated any differently than any other library patron? No, we treat every single individual the same. And what, the, what triggers someone, one of the items that can trigger someone from being allowed in the library is if Sprinkle Police has, had, has to be called for the disturbance, if they won't leave on their own, <coughs> Sprinkle PD is called, then that's what triggers the ban. That is accurate. There's a, um, if the individual does not comply with the request, there's an automatic ban. Assessment and this that. person was given multiple attempts to comply before Sprinkle PD was called? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone have any other questions on that subject? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me know. Uh, is Doug Brown here? Hi. Hi. Um, unfortunately, I had to bother you on either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or New Year's Eve. Um, those were three times where we, there were power outages in Ward 6, and I, I can't think of more inconvenient times. Some were out of our control. I know there were some high winds. I know there were, you know, we had some craziness going on weather-wise. Um, but just on New Year's Eve, no one knew why there were all these outages going on. So I have to, I have to tell something. I have to go back to my constituents and give them an answer about something. Okay. I can report back to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there specific areas that you that one was on somewhere. Fayette. That was just west of Fayette. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like 166 customers. But at one point, it was around 2,000, I believe. 1,500, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? Well, a question. Is a question. Um, I've had a couple calls on the empty lots. And I'm getting different answers on what we're doing with our empty lots and why empty, some of the lots aren't aren't available anymore that were on the list now they're off the list and I was told that we're doing something through economic development and if there is something going on I'd like to be informed of what the procedures are that I mean because I was told that that was put off because of economic development was going to do something with it so I mean I could sign or you want to come up and go over I don't the, think uh, it's it's a lot process I don't think it's through that through her office, it's, it's... But she can give us an update on the ones coming forward. Aren't there some coming forward and some been through the process or... Well, these were lots that have been on and they were taken off. It was, and specifically, I'll speak to it. It's the lot at, at 18th and Mark, Martin Luther King and Cook. It's the one that we own part of and then someone else owns the other part. And okay. uh, so it's... What is the address? 1801 East Cook. Oh. Okay. Um, I think it was uh, put on the... RFP um, 1980 uh, However, it was taken off because it wasn't supposed to be there. That RFP was put out kind of in an interim when someone was leaving and then I took over, whatever. So it was mistakenly put on there and we told the individuals that had bid we weren't selling that lot because there were multiple people that were interested mm -hmm. um, because it was on hold for economic development. They do have a group of lots they are holding, I believe, for some sort of redevelopment plan. Um, however, we do have 
probably around 150 lots we will be putting out it, at some point. If, okay. if that's the case, then if there's a plan out there, I, I would like to be, know what the plan is so when we get these calls then we can have knowledge and we can answer the questions and not have to go around at this because there's a lot of empty lots in Ward 2 and other areas that are available and need to be, we need to get them on the tax rolls. So anything we can do to get them on the tax rolls would be greatly appreciated. They're just a time frame. Just yeah. when can we expect? I get calls about them weekly. Yeah, the uh, ones that, there were like 30 approved. And uh, what's there this? There are 15, I think about 15 approved off the first set. Right. And um, what's the status of those? Well, they passed through council, so now we have to actually do the deeds on them. But okay. with uh, the holidays, it should be hopefully coming up this month where we set up time for them to pay okay. and do the deeds. And then we're just waiting uh, for the next RFP to go out. Um, and with when all will that, that go out? Any idea on the RFP? Uh, well, I'd like to put it out as soon as possible. Okay. Well, so, see, and that's not what I'm talking about, Mayor. That, that's that's a not. I'm talking about the lots that were on there taken off, and then I was told that there's a plan. Economic development has a plan for these certain lots that are taken off. If, if there's a plan out there, I would like to be informed of what the plan is mm -hmm. so that I can have knowledge when people are asking for these lots. Okay. We can give them an answer instead of going around and having this discussion now. Sure. Yeah. There were 97, I apologize, there are 97 mm -hmm. lots that were held back mm -hmm. in the economic deal prior to when I got there for the neighborhood of Hope. Okay, those are still sitting out there. And as uh, Cassandra mentioned, that particular piece of property mm -hmm. got somehow put on that list and it wasn't. So we had informed this gentleman, actually there were two gentlemen, correct, that, that had asked about this. And we told both of them that it was on the plan for the neighborhood of Hope. And and then it just escalated from there just because of the confusion. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to take liberty because that particular lot couldn't be done through the neighborhood of Hope because it's the only one we own on the corner. So there's other things in that area that we don't own the property, own the, pro own the lot. So, you know, I, I just need to know what's going on so I can have knowledge and answer questions. It was somewhat kind of in a smart way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I guess if they're contiguous, uh, a <clears> lot <throat> of times if it's in the Aegis Park or that area, uh, looking at uh, full block development. But if someone has a right. plan of action that, that someone wants to come forward with, by all means, bring it forward. And if it's something that uh, we think is feasible that meets the guidelines of the uh, Neighborhood of Hope or whatever it is, that we bring it back to the council if it made sense to move in that direction. So. <clears throat> That's probably how we could move in that direction, wouldn't we, be able to? So if someone is really interested in buying a lot and has a plan of action that they want to put a house there or a business there, mm -hmm. by all means bring the plan forward and we, uh, if it makes sense, then we can bring it forward to the council for action. We've tried, I've, I personally have tried that with a lot on 8th Street and was mm -hmm. told that couldn't happen. So these people were ready to buy the lot. Mm -hmm. They had a builder ready to go, and I was told, no way. Is that the case, Corporate that, Counselor? Can we do that, or if you explain know what, that? I'm not sure what your, what the. Yeah, if we can get the address, is, we'll, that, oh, we can find yeah, out. Yeah, because I'm not that sure. Your, that was on your. Book. Yeah, it, it's really. We, she knows what we're just going to be. About. We're going to be straightforward and tell you it's a mess. Both of us are, are trying to work Go through. Ahead. I'm, nope, not trying to pull anything. Not trying to do anything. We are. Well, we just want to get an answer bit. here. So <clears throat> that one, um, it wasn't an absolute no. We gave them an option. The option is for any property that we have that has not yet been surplused or put out on RFP, <clears throat> they can get an appraisal done at their cost and pay 80% of the appraised value. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot of people don't like that because they don't know how much it's going to be, so they don't want to do it. That's but right. we have given that option to several people that they can pay for their appraisal and 80% of the appraised value. But my preference would be if someone has a property they want to purchase, put a building there, bring it here, and we can make that decision bring it forward. Is that correct, Counselor? You, that's an option that the city can consider. Yeah. So. If you have anybody that wants to put a building on a vacant property, we, give me a call. You know, why, why can't <laughs> and we'll put it out there? Why can't we just be, to get the get the properties back on the tax rolls? I mean, that's one of the reasons. Well, why, that's the way you do it. This you is want, one of the reasons why we shouldn't be in the te, in the in the property business anyway. This, we I mean, we do not want someone taking a property, sitting on it, and uh, and we have an opportunity for a future development. I mean, we're that's sit, the on whole it. concept. So that's the if they have a plan, have them present it in writing. 
show us the blueprint of their plan, and we can bring it before city council if, it, if we so choose. Alderman Fajenzi. What if they just want to put a parking lot on it adjacent to a building? That's what we'd have to look at. There's a master plan for the neighborhood of Hope. I think that's what I'm hearing here. There's a master plan. And uh, 18th and Cook, I would imagine, uh, I'll drive by there. I've driven by there several times. I imagine that's one of the higher areas for potential development. It's right on the corner of a busy area, Martin Luther King and Cook. And so I think we just received a report from Director Mahoney that uh, we're doing $5 million worth of sewer work in that area. So you're upgrading the infrastructure. We want to make sure we have that opportunity and we don't miss it. So if the plan calls for a parking lot on that yeah, I think, I think corner, the, I mean, or bring the plan forward and then we can decide. Yeah, not to speak out of turn, but um, the same gentleman has called, Alderman Senior called me as well. And the, the property that, they're, that we're talking about here is a, a small, it's a small piece of property. It's not the huge lot on the corner because we don't own that. That's owned by somebody else. It's a small strip of land that's adjacent to the uh, building that the gentleman owns that he wants to use as a parking lot for his for his business. So it's not a huge a huge piece of property. And uh, I'm not a I'm not a surveyor or a developer, but I don't see how that could be used for anything other than a parking lot for his build, for his business. Was the other interested the other party interested. on the corner? There, there was someone else who was interested, and they wanted to do green space, I believe. Wow. <laughs> Who's on the corner? We don't own that. Who owns the corner lot? The way it's broken up, it's right there on the corner, small, small. strip, and then there's a larger strip behind it that's been for sale for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if... Any of them are immediately adjacent to no. it. Well, will make it real easy. No, no. Whoever's on the corner lot, we will contact them. Do they have any intent or the need for the one next to it? And if not, whatever one works best, that's what we should go with. That's what we should do. Okay, moving on. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. So we'll have an answer uh, probably the next city council meeting. Thank you. But again, uh, all the women turn her <laughs> to send so. Uh, if someone wants to buy a piece of property, put a building on it, bring it to uh, our attention, and we'll make it work. Thank you very much. So any other new business? A uh, couple of announcements. One is the uh, SMTD. They're doing the uh, ribbon cutting, I believe, tomorrow, and they're going to move the buses near the county building. Uh, that was in partnership with moving the Salvation Army. That all came to being with SMTD, the county, um, and then Horace Mann. And consequently, one of the domino impacts is the buses are going to move off Capitol Avenue over to the county building and free up that area. And there will be parking, interim parking on Capitol Avenue for some of the businesses in that area. Is that correct, Director? That's correct. Very good. So that's next week. And then uh, the Springfield Art Association, they're having a ribbon cutting for their uh, new facility. And if you have not done so, it's in Enos Park. And they'll have uh, glass blowing, ceramics, jewelry making. It's really turning uh, right behind the Edwards place into a arts campus. Yeah. So you, you should take time. If it, you can't do it Saturday, come at some point in time and really see what's happening in that area. It's really transformational prior to the Y moving over there. So we appreciate uh, everybody that helped in that effort. What time is that Saturday? I think it's 11 o'clock on Saturday. Is that correct? Yep, 11 o'clock. Tomorrow's at 10 o'clock. Uh, Saturday, 11, SMTDs, 10 o'clock. And that will be over at the uh, parking lot by the county, just to the north of the county building. Any other new business? Alderman Redpath. Before we go to citizens for uh, oh, right. to speak, can we, are we having an executive session? Can I ask that? Uh, there is no executive session. Thank you. So the first one to speak is uh, Daryl Harrell. <laughs> Mayor. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I think um, what he signed up to speak about is the same issue that Alderman Thailand brought up earlier. <coughs> okay. So, so I mean, it, it seems like that's a, a, a issue that... 
It's the same issue that Alderman Tyler brought up earlier, so I think it's an issue that would be better discussed okay. with okay. Corporation Council and Library Director rather than here. Okay. And, and certainly, Will and I can do that if that's the that, pleasure uh, that of the would council. be my that would be my recommendation. So, uh, Mr. Harrell, are, are you go if you'd. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. Okay. That's what you that's said you wanted to talk about that's when you signed up. But if it's related to the library, I'd suggest that you get with Juan Huerta and. Um, no, sir, it's not. Okay. It has nothing to okay. do with the library. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and the City Council. I'm on, my subject is friendship. The road of by and by leads to nowhere. Come now and let us reason. My friend Heyman was an evil person who plotted to kill the king and was killed by the same plot he plotted. Open rebuke is better than closed love. Rebuke them openly that others may fear. Mr. Mayor, you can house the homeless, feed the homeless, give them the best of your service because a hungry person has an appetite. Be cautious. Once your, service, once your resources have come to an end, so does their friendship. Patriotism does not have a four-year chef life. Unfortunately, politician does. Your friends are running for your position. I am running the same race and jumping the same hurdles. So I understand how it feels to be tripped up. <coughs> be careful when men gives you praises. The road to hell is paved with people having good intentions. But evil triumph when good men does nothing. Hell and destruction are never satisfied. Money don't care who spends it, and a lie don't care who tells it, as long as, long as it happens. Find your strength in your belief. Stand on the solid rock that you believe in. I read a book, and the, the book title is Believe Instructions Before Leaving Earth. You cannot serve two positions. You will love one and hate the other. I have a friend that told me when I am afraid, he will take me by my right hand so I won't be afraid. Mr. Mayor, wait a minute. Mr. Mayor, give and it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken, and running over. Conclusion, my birthday is January the 7th, 2019. Thank you for the hippopotamus for Christmas. You are a good man, Mr. Mayor, a true leader, and a man of your word. Maybe I move too fast, no disrespect intended. I posted on Facebook, and I wanted all my contacts to meet my friend, the mayor of Springfield, Illinois. 400 East Mason at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And thank him yourself. I called Scaff Distribution, who makes 211 beer, because I have Bassett license. They can, to keep, to, to keep the attention of the people at the mission, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. They can eat at the St. John bread line, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Then 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. from 400 East Mason to 410 South 4th Street from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Apologies, Mr. Mayor, no disrespect intended. Uh, they can also sleep at the Warming Center. In my foolishness, Mr. Mayor, 66 people have been arrested. And the county, Sangamon County, passed out over $20,000 over $20, in tips alone. I follow your leadership, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Boom goes the dynamite. Thank you. Oteria Britton. Is Oteria Britton here? Does anybody else wish to address the council? Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. We're adjourned.